Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We're welcoming back onto the show Dory Donaldson, who's co-founder of Convoy Hope and VP of Convoy Women. Um, Dory, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Adam. Great to be with you. All right, so we, we got a lot to cover today. First <laughs> off, um, as a return guest, if for those that have been watching this series for a long time, you know that Dory is an author in what was our upcoming book and now is our newly launched book. So um, we've been putting together this book for the last, oh, year, year and a half also with um, with Dr. Nancy as well and, um, and uh, Women Connect for Good. It's been a lot of fun and uh, a lot of work bringing together all the authors, but I'll tell you, after the finished project, Product, which we're going to get into as well, which is uh, Dor Dory's contribution to the book as well, the Dor the domino effect, a global call to empower women. So we got a lot to cover, but Dory, just to get us kicked off here, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with what we like to call our Mission Matters Minute. So Dory, at Mission Matters, our aim and our goal is to amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, women, thought leaders, experts, and really to, to amplify their voices. That's our mission. Um, Dory, what mission matters to you? Well, it's the mission of Convoy of Hope. When we are a nonprofit faith-based organization that really is determined to alleviate pain and suffering throughout the world, and we do it in a variety of ways through disaster relief work, through children's feeding, uh, women's empowerment, which is what we're focusing on today, uh, yeah. agricultural initiatives, and a variety of other uh, strategies as well. But the goal is to alleviate pain and suffering, and we know there's plenty of it in this world, and to bring hope to people and tangible help. Amazing. Uh, great to have you back. And, um, uh, you know, some we've been blessed. The show's growing and we have a lot of new listeners, new visitors. Um, so I want to take a step back here before we jump into the book and everything else. And uh, for those that didn't catch the first episode that you and I did together, uh, Dory, let's get into just Convoy of Hope and maybe some of the backstory and how all that began. Yeah, it really is a story that was birthed out of a tragedy. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband's parents were hit by a drunk driver when my husband was 12. He was the oldest of four children. And his father was killed instantly, and his mother was injured very severely. She was in the hospital for months. And uh, they didn't have insurance, nor did the person who hit them. So they were mm -hmm. uh, forced to go on welfare and survive on food stamps and handouts. And uh, it was really the pain of that experience that mm -hmm. um, caused them to experience the kindness of people as well. And so through neighbors and church friends and family members that would bring groceries to their doorstep. And when they saw that the kids had holes in their shoes, they would take them shopping. Some of those practical things that really helped them get through those difficult years, um, that, that power of kindness really helped him not become bitter and mm -hmm. also uh, caused him to eventually one day as, as an adult realize that other people are suffering and he did have the power to do something about it really through an encounter as well with Mother Teresa that was quite pivotal mm -hmm. in his life. Um, he was on a, a trip to Calcutta, India to write a book for uh, some people. And while he was there, they said, we have someone we'd like you to interview for our book. Lo and behold, it was Mother Teresa. And so he had the opportunity to sit down with her. And in the course of the interview, she turned the tide on him, the tables on him and said, mm -hmm. young man, what are you doing to help the poor and suffering? And uh, he says, well, I'm, I'm really not doing much of anything. Mm -hmm. And her response to him really made an impact. She said, everyone can do something. Just mm -hmm. do the next kind thing that God puts in front of you. And so, you know, he went back to his hotel room that night and he just really began to uh, have some self-reflection about what his life had looked like mm -hmm. and what he had been doing with it. And um, from that point on, um, he just really began to change some uh, just some desires of his heart mm -hmm. and what he wanted to accomplish in life and yeah. his goals and dreams. So. Um, we had no idea where it was going to go, and now we're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year at Convoy of Hope. And yeah. um, according to Forbes, we're now the 35th largest charity in America out of 1.8 million. So mm. who knew? We certainly didn't know at the time, but wow, um, been an amazing journey. 
It's it's an amazing story, an amazing journey, and you and you wrote about um, uh, some of this in the book as well, which I was uh, I was just really pleased with as I as we kind of went through um, when I when I did then you don't know this this is our first time talking since it's really been published published and I had some things I wanted to tell you and I so the way that we we order the chapters is by alphabetical order so the second chapter um, is your chapter in the book so um, when we're which of course you know that but um, when we're not, when I was doing the final edit and the final read it went like I was doing this kind of like on a, maybe a Saturday morning or something I thought you know it'd be a nice like like let go through read because a lot we publish a lot in the business sector and a lot of different like other kind of like technical books as well too so I didn't quite have my mind ready for what I was going to like what I was going to take in um, so I, I get to your chapter by the end by the time I'm done with your chapter like I don't normally like get misty eyed at our business books no offense to any of those authors by the way <laughs> but, but they don't necessarily pull at my heartstrings and make me want to go out there and make a difference in the world in the sense of like like it really it really hit me like by the time i was mm -hmm. done with with your the first chapter was amazing and i get to your chapter and and it just it hit me like it hit me like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm misty eyed i'm sitting here i'm like all of a sudden it's a saturday morning and i'm just like <laughs> oh, it's like it's heavy but it's inspiring and it's so layered and it's so it's complex but then it's it's also the human like journey and the struggle yeah. and like and like yeah. the story of what it took to make a difference so first off i just want to thank you because you're like you bringing that type of work to this if it hits me this way um and this is my my, my business as well as a publisher then for the readers i'm just like i feel that mm -hmm. words that stories mm -hmm. really have the power to change and to change yes. things it's very kind of you to say, well, I'm, I'm grateful and I hope that it will make a difference and spur us all on to, mm -hmm. to do more because we all have the ability to do something yeah. and we just have to look at what's in our hand for, for the multitude of compassionate people around the world that have linked arms with us. It's really mm -hmm. been a movement of kindness, yeah. um, you know, individuals, churches, businesses, civic groups, government agencies have mm -hmm. all come together to make a difference. And, um, it's it's time it's treasures it's a myriad of of giftings that people have chosen to make a difference hmm. and now as you mentioned you know i believe you said 30 years later um i mean hundreds of millions of people served um i was kind of thinking about like even from just as as a as a writer as an author um like how you were able to and, and what your process was to maybe pull some of the stories or the case studies or things that you shared like because it's a lifetime of work like that must that, that couldn't have been easy yeah um well i think when something hits you personally and it becomes your own experience that's mm -hmm. what that's what you want to share right it has yeah. to touch your own heart and so the stories that i shared in the chapter are women i've met um, that really changed me. In mm. fact, I probably was more changed than maybe they've been changed yeah. by interacting with them. Honestly, you know, sometimes we feel like we're the ones going in and we're going to make a difference. We're going to, you know, save people. But honestly, the transformation that happens in us is, mm. is as big or bigger, um, mm. because we find out who we are and that uh, we're really lucky to just get to be a part of it. And that's how we feel. We feel just really lucky that we get to be a part of it. And we don't certainly take any of the credit for this because yeah. I think, um, you know, we're people of faith. God wants mm -hmm. to help people more than we do. And yeah. that's been proven true through all of this. There are people who we don't even know that have said, yeah. yeah, I want to be part of that. And so that's really what's made Convoy of Hope what it is today. Amazing mm -hmm. partners, volunteers. Um, nearly a million volunteers through the years have um, been a part of it. So we couldn't do what we do without them. Mm. I want to go a little bit into some of the stories that you shared as well um, to give the audience a little bit of a flavor for like what to expect when they pick up a copy. So let's maybe start with um, um, Merida, Merida, if I'm saying that correctly. Mm -hmm. Merida. Merida. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's start with Merida's mm -hmm. story. Yeah. Um, she's a mom in Ethiopia has three children and um, she was forced to live on the streets because mm. her husband abandoned her and uh, having no skills of her own due to lack of education, mm -hmm. which many times women um, just don't have the opportunities that 
uh, men have, that boys have. Girls are not mm -hmm. sent to school sometimes. If a parent has to choose who to send to school mm. and due to early marriage, lots of lots of reasons, right? Where yeah. women just are at a disadvantage. And Marita found herself in that situation. And so she lived on the streets, but to protect her daughters, this is the mm. part, this is the part that I can hardly say without crying. She would strap them to her legs. Yeah. So they wouldn't be taken during the night. If you can imagine, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. that kind of anguish that she experienced as a mother. And then when she came into our program and she got the ability to uh, produce income, mm. made all the difference. And now she can send her children to school. And she's making injera, which is a popular kind of a sourdough kind of tortilla bread yeah. that they make in Ethiopia, if you've ever had that. Oh, I have. It's delicious. They have a little yes. Ethiopian town in um, in uh, Los Angeles, and I love it. It's so good. Oh, it's spongy. Yeah. It's tasty. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of spongy. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, her life's never been the same. And uh, I was able to visit her in her home, and mm. it's just a tiny little home, but she was so proud to have us visit. Wow. And she went over the minute we walked in. First thing she did was she went over to her a uh, little china cupboard, believe it or not. It, it was beautiful. She had a key in her pocket. She pulled it out, opened the door, cupboard door, and pulled out her business record keeping book. And she wanted to show us how all the money that she's making and how she's keeping careful track of it all and wow. um, her earnings and her expenses and how she's learning all these business skills, which is what the women are taught um, is as part of their training is that mm -hmm. leads them into their vocational training. Um, and the women are taught about their, their um, personal worth as well. Mm -hmm. So we really address every part of a woman's life from her, um, personal life to her financial skills mm -hmm. and then on to the vocational training so that it's really a holistic approach to um, helping someone become healthy on every front yeah. in their life. And this really, like when you talk about these business skills and things like yeah, and that they're being taught, I mean, this is breaking like generational cycles, right? Like this is taught, like for her children for like, can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I feel, and and the, the chapter title is the domino effect, mm -hmm. and really the domino is you start with one woman, yeah, and it changes everything in her family because her children now see an empowered mother, mm -hmm. so her sons are going to look at her differently. They're going to look at women differently. Um, she has the ability to send them to school; doesn't have to choose who to send. She yes. can send both her boys and her girls to school. For the first time, perhaps in her life, I've met many moms who said, oh, and now we can have chicken. We can have chicken on yeah. the weekends. And we couldn't even have meat before. Mm. And now they can have healthier food so they can be healthier. And when kids go to school, they have a future. Mm -hmm. um, and so that next generation is changed and the cycle of poverty is broken. So eradicating hunger can start first with mom. You mm. empower mom because moms want what's best for their kids. And they'll mm. do anything to ensure that they survive, but that they also thrive. Yes. I want to, uh, let, let's also talk about another story that you talk about in there. So, um, Magrath, am I saying that accurate? Mm -hmm. Close enough. So t tell us a little bit more about, about the story that you share with Mag Magrath. Can you pronounce it right for me? I want, I don't want to mess up her name. Magrath. I think Magrath. Magrath. Is, Magrath. Is there we go. Yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> all on me. That's not on the <laughs> Magrath. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. It's a lot like Margaret, but not quite. Mm -hmm. um, she's from Tanzania and mm -hmm. I met her just a little over a year ago and she has been a widow for over 20 years, mm -hmm. seven children. And uh, she is a very talented Maasai jewelry maker. Mm -hmm. And so we came to her home and we watched her and two of her daughters. They were actually making jewelry. Yeah. We got to see how they made it. It was absolutely fascinating. But she is in demand. So she provides jewelry for several vendors. She mm -hmm. also has a farm, but she's built homes for both of her sons. Mm -hmm. And now her daughters, who we got to speak to her daughters, and they told us that they are so happy because now they have the business that they're doing with their mom. But pretty soon she won't have to do it anymore because they'll be able to take care of her. Wow. So, right. So that generational training has, has been passed on to her children and of course her grandchildren. So the whole family has become healthy as a result. So um, I just think that's incredibly powerful. Yeah. 
It's it's amazing, and and I mean the amount of and these stories I know you you have them for days and days because you've helped so many people and Convoy of Hope's helped so many people through the years. Um, I understand there was even a, a study that the University of London did um, on a Convoy of Hope's women's empowerment program. May, maybe t talk about that a little bit. Yes. Well, there's there's a few intellectual terms that I don't quite all uh, can't repeat to you, <laughs> yes. um, but. Uh, amazing what they found. They found that um, as they studied in three different countries, um, mm -hmm. women who had gone through our program, and many of them um, have gone through a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of psychological scars and unhealthiness there. Mm -hmm. And they found that as the women move through the program, that the program kind of has an inoculating effect mm -hmm. on them because by the end of it, when compared to women of higher socioeconomic level mm -hmm. of um, less trauma in their lives. Yes. That the women in our program were happier, were just as um, well off, if not more well off mm -hmm. than those women because of what they would learned, how they've grown and what they've experienced. So it was just living proof to us that it's, it's working mm -hmm. and it is, um, it's being successful and it's really accomplishing what we had hoped mm -hmm. far more than we had hoped actually mm -hmm. from the time we started in Ethiopia back in 2010 with a grant from USAID. Um, we had no idea truly how successful it was going to be and how important it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And now it's really become one of our um, strategic initiatives. That's mm -hmm. a part of children's feeding and agricultural training, really helping entire communities to become sustainable. And that's mm -hmm. the goal is to go, come into a community, feed the children, mm -hmm. empower the mothers, train the farmers so that they can feed their families, their communities, and then we can move on to the next community and help mm -hmm. them become healthy. But they don't need us forever. We always want to go in with an exit strategy because we don't want to be feeding their grandchildren. Yes. We want to help them have tools so that they can feed their own eventually. And uh, mm. that's really Convoy's goal is to to go in and, and do asset-based um, community development to say, what do they have? What What's in their hands? What do they mm. have that we could take and, and we could help them capitalize on and, um, and not, so we're just not giving handouts all the time, right? Mm -hmm. We're helping yeah. them grow and use what they have. And uh, I just think that's a really beautiful part of the whole process. And now with so much, um, I guess, obviously a lot of progress has been made, but then you look at something like also, mm -hmm. you know, COVID-19 happening and, and, you know, hundreds of millions of people um, worldwide being, you know, thrust back into like, like extreme mm -hmm. poverty. Um, yes. Can you maybe talk about like for the audience that we don't l necessarily get this information every day, like, like what's, what's happening, like what's taking place? Well, I mean, I think we were on a trajectory of, of uh, hopefully ending poverty yeah. eventually, but COVID-19 absolutely sent more than 130 million people back into poverty. And poverty mm. is, extreme poverty is considered making less than $1.90 a day. Mm. So when you think about that, um, yeah. that's, that's huge. It doesn't take much for a tipping point for a family to be um, desperately in need. And yeah. that's, you know, uh, that's really what we're, we're striving to work with is people who are uh, the lowest of the low. And mm -hmm. even America's working poor. Uh, we know that our, the situation in America is desperate as well. Mm -hmm. And so Convoy works here in the U.S. as well through disaster responses, as well as um, helping America's working poor through different strategies. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that, that it's tremendous. The need is always going to be there. Um, it just got a little bit bigger. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we're going to throw up our hands and say, well, it's too big. <laughs> we can't mm -hmm. do anything because that's not what we're supposed to do. We have to keep striving forward to make a difference because it matters to every mm -hmm. single person that we're able to touch and, and just give that hand up. It's yeah. really a hand up, not a handout. It's a hand up. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, uh, um, I, I see this and I see that, you know, more work needs to be done, not just from, you know, Convoy of Hope. I mean, just in general, like yes. all of us getting involved and all of us being like awareness, even just awareness about yes. what's going on, because, Absolutely. you know, we live in our own little, you know, echo chambers or bubbles or things like this. And like, that's yeah. why I'm excited to have someone like yourself yeah. on the show to, you know, let people know what's going on and why this yeah. matters, you know? Yeah. I had a fascinating interview with Dr. Henry Cloud, um, or heard it, I should say, mm. with Malala. And he mm. asked her, he said, why, why should we care about mm. what's going on around the world? Why should it matter to us? And her answer was so incredibly powerful. She said, we all must see the world as our home and mm. everyone in it as our brothers and our sisters. Oh, mm. That says it right there. We all need to care um, because it does matter. It does mm -hmm. matter. And if we aren't helping feed children, helping empower mothers, then the terrorists probably will be. They're mm -hmm. going to get that bowl of rice from somewhere. And yeah. I would rather it be for me than somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the need is tremendous. It truly is. But we all can make a difference. And wherever you are, in your own backyard, there's yeah. always needs, right? Just um, open your eyes and, and see what they are and jump in. So speaking of getting involved, um, Dory, how do people get involved with Convoy of Hope, Convoy of Women? Like, how do people participate in this? Well, you can always go to our website, convoyofhope.org. Pretty easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to know more about women's empowerment, you can learn some there. You could also go to the Convoy Women website, and that's mm -hmm. convoyofhope.org slash women. Um, advocacy is huge. You mm -hmm. can follow us on social media at Convoy Women, at Convoy of Hope, um, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, we're all there. Yeah. Um, those are great ways to share the stories. Use your voice to be the voice for those who don't have one. Hmm. Um, of course, you know, uh, gifts, financial gifts are huge because we can't do what we do without financial gifts. But mm -hmm. we're able to leverage your gift through all the partners that we have and the gifts and kinds that are provided to Convoy of Hope. Um, we were able to are able to leverage those gifts four and five and six times, sometimes mm -hmm. even more than that. Um, through amazing partners like Hormel and Home Depot and um, Target and Walmart, all, all of those amazing partners of ours that really help us do what we do as well. Mm. Amazing. Um, well, Dory, thank you so much for coming back on the show. And I'm thrilled to continue to spread the the word and the message of Convoy of Hope. And then also of, to get this book out so that more people can hear the stories and it can make a difference as well. Um, and speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't hit the subscribe or follow button yet, we welcome you to do that. This is a daily show. Every day we're putting out new content, new ideas, and hopefully new inspiration to help you get involved as well um and in whatever your mission is and accomplish that and dory again so much fun thank you so much for coming back i really appreciate you, you making some time for us i enjoyed it so much thanks again